Hi, this is Bill Clodsey, jumping into an Ixalan draft here, actually recording over a quick draft I did. We've got LSV there on the other side of the table. This is a competitive league. Starting with Imperial Aerosaur is pretty typical when you open that card. It's a, it's a fine first pick. It gives you a 3-3 flyer. It's fine in Dinosaurs or any aggressive white deck. And the second pack, we find another good dinosaur, the Common Territorial Hammer Skull. It's just a solid follow-up. We can stay on color. We have another dinosaur. A couple more rares that we're not really interested in. Herald of Secret Streams and the, the uh, Explore Lord vehicle, Shadowed Caravel. I've seen it do things, but we can stay on color here and take Paladin of the Bloodstained. So... Stand color again, we can take yet another Paladin. This card's impressed me. It is such a fast format that going wide and having a life linker and pretty good stats for four mana, uh, those all appeal to me. And the cards we have now wouldn't be bad in a vampire deck. So that's what I'm thinking as I take the second Paladin here, or maybe I just really want a uh, foil. Okay, so no super aggressive card here. Legion's Judgment would be fine. I'm looking at Thrash of Raptors. We have a couple dinosaurs already, and as an efficient body at four mana in red, Thrash of Raptors is hard to beat. Okay, so we do have four four drops now and no two drops. So we open a pack with two excellent red four drop dinosaurs, but we're not in the market for four drops. It's just an easy um, raptor companion out of here to fill in our curve, make sure we have a playable deck. If you're taking turn two off most of the time, it's not going to be a pleasant, pleasant format for you. <laughs> it's all about attacking. So interesting pack here. Sunrise Seeker, pretty standard. It's a five mana explore card. But then we have Imperial Lancer. Not one that is typically on my radar, but here we have a bunch of dinosaurs in red-white, so depending on how aggressive we can get, we can follow that up with another Lancer, and a Frenzied Raptor comes around pretty late, so that's another nice follow-up, and cements us pretty well into red-white, seeing these cards go late. I'm looking at one with the wind in this pack, because if we do get a bunch of white dinosaurs, we can still suit up Imperial Lancer as it 3-3 three, three, double striker, but in the end I want to just cut white a little more uh, and probably not go into blue at all. So hijack there, 50-50, and then some other cards we're not too interested in this pack. Now we open Dowsing Dagger. I'd rather just have a Pirate's Cutlass most of the time because not too much of our stuff has evasion and giving them two O2 blockers just is such a <laughs> it's such like anti-tempo for you they have two free blockers but the other rare the foil vance's blasting cannons could be a nice way to to follow this up and rigging runner solid one drop you don't have to be in pirates you just have to be attacking for this to be good and it yeah makes our deck even more aggressive than it already was so I'm looking also at some other options in this pack, but ultimately Rigging Runner is just the strongest and most aggressive. All right, two white red options, Sure Strike and Queen's Commission, to force through some double strike damage, maybe burn them for eight. We could take Sure Strike here, and that's going to be the choice. Another Thrash of Raptors. I'm really liking this card, and it's sort of the best deck it goes into is, is the white red deck. Uh, sometimes, I guess, green, red dinos. But we have plenty of white dinos to start things off with, and it also helps out our lancers. A lot of synergy going on here. Fiery Kennade just kills all of our own things. So, uh, and we already have a bunch of paladins, and Skyblade is not super aggressive. Cobbled Wings, on the other hand, can put some of our two power or four power guys into the air, maybe even Thrash of Raptors. And we have all these early things with first strike and double strike. So seeing dinosaur stampede, it's also another one I'm, I don't draft too often, just trumpet blast. But in this deck, it's gonna possibly get in some serious damage. 
and let our first strikers win combat for free. Not to mention, give all of the dinosaurs without trample some extra push. All right, not much, not much in this pack left. Demystify for the sideboard, and I've been happy with a demystify in the sideboard against white, especially Ixalan's binding and the pacifism are both good targets, and you can unlock whatever they stole as a trick to either block with it or attack them. Another dinosaur stampede. So I've definitely never had two of these in a deck, and this. Uh, this is kind of the chance. If, if any deck was a Dinosaur Stampede deck, this would be it. More four drops. And given that we have a couple of Dinosaur Stampedes, I like both Thrash of Raptors and Paladin of the Bloodstained more than Brazen Buccaneers. So those are going to end up in the, in the sideboard early, since we do not need four drops or even six drops, kind of cutting the Sun Crowned Hunters early. Another Demystify. And that's pack two. Yeah, this will be a, a turbo draft. I've edited the, the power of the magic of video editing. I've edited down the, the times a bit. Yeah, I recorded this without any sound, but <laughs> didn't want to upload it with, uh, with no sound at all. So you've got my commentary on it now. All right, what do we want to open? What do we want to open in pack three? Just more aggressive creatures. You can see our curve here. We're missing out on a bunch of two drops. We have Sure Strike and some stuff like that. But here we go. We can fill in our curve with Lightning Strike, but <laughs> opening a, one of the best cards in the set, Vraska's Contempt. One of the few cards that deals with Vraska efficiently. And by efficiently, I mean Vraska only two for ones that you get to kill Vraska, but it, they get a, they get at least a kill or a, or creature out of her. So that's your best bet against Vraska is to have a better position going in and have Vraska's contempt. It's also a good answer to a lot of the bombs in the format. If your opponent resolves Gisheth, you need instant speed removal to deal with it before it hits you, or just a, an incredibly ridiculous board that would always work too. So now our curves looking interesting still only two two mana creatures and then way too much going on at four mana. Uh, here the picks between fire cannon blast and Adanto Vanguard but because we're missing out on those two mana creatures I think it's an easy Vanguard. Uh, we don't have much in the way of removal but what we have is a lot of early pressure which turns any any uh, tricks we have into removal because they'll be forced to block. The stats given by Pirate Cutlass are so great. If we manage to land this on a first striker or double striker or trampler flyer, Pirate's Cutlass is just great here. I'm looking at the other random options. Wouldn't want a second blasting cannon. Uh, but yeah, it'll have to be Pirate's Cutlass out of this pack. So here's a weird one. I haven't drafted the ultra low curve red white deck yet, talking about a bunch of one drops. So I'm looking at this Tillanali skin shifter as a burn spell, but what does it really have to copy? I guess the best thing to copy is the thrash of raptors uh, on attack, so it doesn't have an enter the battlefield effect, so Imperial Aerosaur is not as good. It can copy a raptor companion, get in for six damage. So yeah, I'm also not interested in the other cards in this pack. Dual shot, we should have access to those. Skyblade is fine, but not exciting. So ultimately, I take the Skin Shifter as a possibility for our deck. And we get another Skyblade here anyway. We need to fill in our two drops a little bit, and it's not the worst thing to just ping in the air for one a turn, or put a Pirate's Cutlass on it. Nest Robber. Now I'm looking at Nest Robber uh, next to Imperial Lancer. That has to be the fastest start in the format. Turn one, Lancer. Turn two, Robber. And you are attacking for four damage on turn two. I didn't realize it at the time, but this deck... This deck actually has uh, turn four kill. And you, you don't always have access to those in Limited. 
but turn one Imperial Lancer, turn two Nest Robber, that gets in for four, uh, turn three Dinosaur Stampede, and turn or turn three and turn four Dinosaur Stampedes, and that gets in for uh, like 26 total damage. So that's pretty good. Or rather, um, 24 total damage. But anyway, your opponent's going to be dead on turn four. The swashbucklings come late in this pack, maybe a second sure strike. Yeah, the last time I got a turn four kill unlimited was with Insoul Artifact and some other uh, red enchantment to aura up my ornithopter, make it a, a giant attacker. Because e even on its own, an ornithopter attacking for five on turn two still only kills on turn five, so you need a little extra push to actually kill on turn four. I've never seen a turn three kill in standard limited, maybe cube. All right, need to make some cuts here. Uh, cutting Vance's blasting cannons, because instead of using that as card advantage, we're just going to play a big threat on turn four instead of going any later than that, or, or just play less lands for the card advantage. So do we need both sure strikes? I want to use both swashbucklings. There was a 3-0 deck at the World Championship piloted by Christian Calcano, piloted and drafted by, with four swashbucklings, and that was a card I wouldn't have even dreamed of putting in my deck. But the way it lines up with removal, and the way it acts as a push through of damage, it just works up, works well in this format for whatever reason. But it's especially going to be good in our deck if we can land it on a double striker. So we've got both dinosaur stampedes in there, a ton of one drops and two drops. Uh, the queen's commissions are great in a race, and they're just the last thing you play, leaving out hijack. Uh, but yeah, 15 lands. Pretty even between the early game, white and red. So just the few more red cards make us play eight red, seven white. Take a screenshot there. Save, and we're off to the queues here. Round one. versus Rastaf. Now this hand, so we have 15 lands in the deck, so we don't expect to draw a third of our lands in our opening hand, but we do. But also it means we're not likely to draw too many lands. I mean, less than one third of the rest of our draws should be lands. So I kind of like this. It's got two of our best spells. It has our first pick from pack one. It has our first pick from pack three, <laughs> if that tells you anything. And we need to draw some early creatures and we don't quite get there yet. But as a five-card or four-card hand, or, yeah, five-card hand, this this is looking decent. Nice. We draw Raptor Companion. And our opponent's on Merfolk. So Shaper Apprentice, we'll have to figure out how we want to deal with this. Now their Apprentice doesn't have flying just yet, and I don't want them to figure out how aggressive we are. So it looks like an easy Aerosaur here. We get in four, we also put another threat into play. Now our opponent doesn't make an attack and has the same mana they were on on turn three, so must just be a, a poor draw there. Kind of thought about this, uh, just going for an attack in the air. That way we don't have to waste Lightning Strike on a 2-1, and we don't have to waste Dinosaur Stampede to get in a bunch of damage when it's not lethal. But if we go Queen's Commission, Dinosaur Stampede becomes ridiculous next turn. 
pumping two more creatures. That's four more power. And they're just gonna they're just gonna swing out a little bounce. Depths of de desire, ramp them up to whatever they needed for mana, and that is all fine with me. And they're getting aggressive. They're the Merfolk deck, right? They need to start hitting us, so they're putting us down to 18 here. And that might just uh, be their downfall. Let's get in there. So I'm kind of, I kind of want them to block the vampire, and if they do, they're dead. They might realize we have like a sure strike or something, and we can't possibly pump the vampire enough to kill their 2-5, their precious 2-5. But it turns out <laughs> the rest of the damage with the Stampede and the Lightning Strike was enough to finish them off. It just shows you the speed and power of this deck. Uh, we are playing against Merfolk, so Dual Shot can pick off those 2-1 flyers. It picks off a few of the targets in, in that deck. It might just clear the way for us. Against Bounce, I don't necessarily want as many auras, so Swashbuckling's an early cut. We still have one in there. This hand looks a bit better than our first hand because it has a guaranteed play on turn two, and we're even drawing great getting that planes on time. Shaper Apprentice. Well, that's where our dual shot comes in handy. And now we could either trade off our nest robber or threaten to attack for five the next turn, which is a bit better. Yep, they've got the double Shaper Apprentice. Where's that dual shot off the top? And they identify that they're one of the more aggressive decks in the format and want to get that hit in. Can't blame them. Uh, so here, it's always going to be easy to attack with the Vanguard as long as you have a healthy life total. They don't want to trade their Apprentice, which is their only other Merfolk, for four of my life. So here's an easy attack. They'll just take that, and now we play Territorial Hammer Skull, which makes their blocks a nightmare next turn, especially between that and Lightning Strike. And we've got double Dinosaur Stampede. That'll mess things up a bit. What do they go after here? They go after the Vanguard. So we're not getting in as much damage this turn. They didn't expect to be able to block the Vanguard. Uh, so we'll just play a bunch of stuff. They also didn't realize we had haste, so they would have prevented more damage here if they uh, if they tapped the hammer skull. But since we got the nest robber out, we get one more damage in. And this just looks absurd. If we draw land next turn, uh, we're getting in just a ton of damage. And they're going all out, so so they have no fear of our stampede. Um, so I'm just going to pretend I want to block this a million times. Uh, it would make sense if we had a, a dual shot, but if we had dual shot, we would have killed those two ones a long time ago. Jade Guardian, that's not one we can tap down with the Hammer Skull. So this, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how this works out. Well, we've got two Stampedes in hand. It might might be time for an all-out attack. If we drew land, it would have been even easier because they'd effectively be at 10. Doing a bit of math there. And it sort of works out that if they block the wrong thing, they just lose the Jade Guardian and we don't lose anything. And if they block uh, a dinosaur, they're taking more damage than they can survive. So here we go. They'll take exactly 13 because the Stampede gives Trample to the Hammer Skull. And that's match one. Jump into the queue again here.
BWG. And this is a nice opening hand. We don't have our turn to four damage set up yet, but we could draw into it. And in the meantime, we have Lightning Strike to deal with any pesky blockers. worried about them casting here, but we'll just attack for one first. If we had a dinosaur to play, we'd go ahead and play that. Start bluffing what we might have with our one planes up. Uh, dual shot is one thing to bluff, but the pump, the more common pump you see is in white. So they might hesitate before, <laughs> who knows what, who knows what, just gets it in their head. So do they want their Dire Fleet Hoarder? That just depends on what's in their hand. So they most likely have another land. That's a sweet draw. Uh, we'll just play the Nest Robber. And since we have this Sure Strike to back it up, pretty easy to jam in here. And pretty tempting if they block the Nest Robber to um, pump the Lancer. But ultimately, we can save that Sure Strike uh, so we don't have to lose our nest robber to get in that 8 damage. Cool, well turn 5. Uh, do they have enough to block all this? And what would they want to block in the first place? The obvious block is nest robber, because we're at 20 life, and uh, the problem with that is we're getting in a ton of damage because of the double strike. That's like 14 damage here. So this was just about the draw that, that kills on turn 4, but we'll have to settle for a turn 5 kill. Alright, looking at dual shot again, it kills some pirates. It's not really the way we want to kill those pirates to unlock some treasure. Another sure strike. Yeah, i got some options here, but we'll just submit. Fire Shrine Keeper. One, one drop Menace Guy. And we've got a nice curve out here. Keeper into Skyblade. I don't expect to ever be able to uh, activate the Keeper, but it could happen. If the game does draw out, it's a, a powerful effect. Mostly we just want that damage every turn. What was that curse from Innistrad or Dark Ascension? The curse of like fiery heart or something. It just deals one damage to your opponent during their upkeep. That's kind of like our Fire Shrine Keeper here. At least in the early games. So yeah, they can't block any of this. And we just play our Frenzied Raptor. Can we draw our Cobbled Wings off the top to get in for even more next turn. No, no such luck. And that's reason enough to leave back the Raptor. It's a bad trade for the Hoarder. They seem to be playing all the colors of the rainbow, so if we give them yet another one, they might be able to deploy something pretty crazy. So we get in two and just bide our time here. Yep, there's another color, Swamp. So they have access to all five colors of mana. Not in the same turn exactly, but we don't know what to expect. Leave, we'll just make the same attack here. <laughs> and yeah, I was actually expecting the 3-3 three, three flash thing, uh, which is reason not to attack into five mana, but we have the lightning strike, so I figured we'd kill it before blocks. We can't kill the sail back before blocks, but we have another pretty good answer for it with the sure strike. 
and I don't want to spend lightning strike on such a common and mundane two drop, but it does more than just kill the dire fleet hoarder. It also gives us our fire shrine keeper into play. So ultimately I thought that was well worth it here. Cause that could just be a few more points of damage. And if they get low enough, yeah, I'm pointing out Exodia deck over there. Once you get all five colors of mana, you're really doing it. And they have it. I mean, treasure, one of each land type, an island, and unknown shores. Treasure map. Uh, that's not the defense they need to assemble for now. Six, and I don't have to worry about any flash creatures anymore, which is well enough since we don't have any way to deal with those. Vanquish the weak. They really want that that dude. So I'm bluffing another sure strike. <laughs> just to you know, just to why not? And then uh playing another Thrash of Raptors. The absolutely correct play would have been not to tap the mana there and bluff the lightning strike or something, but I was over it, getting getting cocky with this this here deck. All right, so they've got a lot of mana. They ran out the treasure map. And what is this? Thundering Spineback. Can we draw the perfect answer to that? The answer is yes. Uh, I want to make our creatures either unblockable or trade with the Spineback. So if we make our Frenzied Raptor big enough, this forces them to block the ground creature or die. So they trade their seven drop with our four drop before getting any value. And we have two lethal creatures in play. So they're gonna need a good answer and they get to see our mountain in hand, our beautiful mountain that we held back. And what's this, Mark of the Vampire? So what's the correct attack here? We could attack with everything and they block our Aerosaur and they go to one, or we could not lose anything and make sure they lose their freebooter by attacking for four. Uh, so that's just the absolutely correct attack here. And Encampment Keeper coming out. So we don't have six power on the board. They know about our mountain, so we might as well play it. We don't have six power. Uh, we could draw another trick or a swashbuckling, but they figure that they've seen enough and they don't have much of a chance after going to one. So, 2 0, 4 0, heading into the finals. Psyker Dad. Here it is. Here's our broken opening if we can get that mountain on turn two. Now, I'm greedy enough to keep hands like this with, with aggressive decks. I mean, even though we only have 14 lands left in the deck, less than half a chance to draw one. Hey, what could go wrong? We have a, we have our one drop in hand, our one mana one one. Oh, got punished. Got punished. But, I mean, that's kind of my criteria for keeping it, keeping or mulliganing a hand. If there's any chance of of sort of drawing a, drawing out of it, then I'll go for it, and. No, there's a land, but not the land we need exactly yet. Can't attack into that. Well, I guess I should say, if there's a reasonable chance of of just winning, if you draw a specific card, like a, a specific land type, then I usually keep it. Can we get that land? Yes, so we do find a land here that lets us get in for two. And we stumbled a bit. Hopefully the power level of this deck will will let us claw out of this game. And they've stumbled a bit too. Black, green, merfolk. That's not really a, a deck you expect to see, but here it is. They've got that hexproof thing that is so hard for the hammer skull to attack through. So we can't really attack through it.
What about this? So this is a bit of a funny one. They're attacking into two power of first strike with a 3-2. So I expect they have a trick, but I kind of want to get greedy here. I mean, we're far enough behind that we've got to go for something like this or just risk dying too early. And they make an interesting play. They could blow us out here, right? If they have like a plus two, plus two pump, which they do, but they only put one of the pumps on the, the branch walker. They could have put both because it's a merfolk. Uh, they might have expected a trick from us, in which case they just wanted a another power on their Jade Guardian, which has Hexproof. But I'm happy enough trading their uh, one and a half for two, two of our cards for their pumped up branch walker. So we deploy the Raptor, which can block the Guardian, if we're not afraid of another boost over there. And sure enough, they have a boost, Emergent Growth. We have to block here, uh, but we save nine damage. So I'm happy enough to block there and survive. Uh, this turn, uh, don't cast the Rigging Runner first. Uh, attack, play a 3-3, three, three, and also play a 2-2 two, two Runner. And they used up their big pump spell, so the, the four power is not enough to kill us in one or even two turns. And we're starting to build our forest back up. We would have just been fairly well crushed if they had a another creature in play, even if they just have this 3-3. Three, three. But to be fair, I mean, we're mono-white, we're playing tiny creatures. We could have easily had a pump spell in our hand, like the, the vampire's one-drop thing. So I'm looking at this. Uh, we get to attack out here because of Dinosaur Stampede, and of course they go for some kind of block. And they go for the block that punishes us the most, which is good on them. But we do trade with the Hexproof, which we won't be able to tap anyway. And if we draw red, we have a, a ton of pressure, and it just really depends on what they get here and what we can draw. I'm tapping out six mana for... Uh, and hitting a land off the Queen's Agent. And what a draw here. One of our few pirates, and we get to equip the Cutlass to it. First strike, no less. And then we can make our Flyer lethal, so they have to block one on each. And the First Striker kills the Lifelinker. And the 5-5 five five kills the, uh, the Reach. And we keep both of our creatures, so that was the best possible draw. Luck, skill, and victory. All right, game two here. Yeah, so we, we clawed out of a, a kind of messy situation of not drawing the right lands early through the sheer power of our deck and possible misplays from the opponent. Um, hard to say there were misplays without knowing what they were wondering about. All right, I don't mind trading our bad two-drop for their good two-drop, and we certainly can't block it. Didn't even check what they what they put on put on top there. But again, we have this uh, Skullduggery could kill our nest robbers at any time, so we'll just throw those out there. To be mana efficient, I like doing Queen's Commission there. It doesn't give the most power in play. We could have attacked with the nest robber, but next turn we can either play a four drop or two two drops, the Vanguard and the nest robber. So that was pretty good. And they hit another land, and it was just the second, or rather, the Tishana's Wayfinder, they hit off the Branch Walker. So what about this turn? We're getting to the point where we need blockers. So do we attack with both robbers? And they only have seven power on board, so we can't be too afraid of them winning right out. We'll go in with both nest robbers and hold back some vampires, which are the perfect chump blockers. Two, 
two the, the deal is two for one on chump blockers and they also gain some life as a bonus vanguard comes in and threatens their life a little more vanguard is not the chump blocker you want unless you're chump blocking ancient brontodon it doesn't save you much life uh, what we could do here is double block the branch walker and then trade four life for it but i want to keep all the spells here all of our creatures in play fathom fleet cutthroat well all of our things are tiny enough that they die to any damage anyway so that's just a hill giant what about this attack? We only get to attack in with the vanguard. We don't even have a pump spell we can bluff. So we're holding back our vampires on chump duty. And even our robber is a good blocker for the branch walker. And then let's get let's get aggressive. Uh, the raptors is nice. It um, lets us draw into a land and play two spells next turn. But it's also just a five power attacker if we need it to be. They are coming in here. They don't attack with the branch walker. That's fair enough. I don't want to die to a pump spell this turn, so it's pretty safe to block the bigger creature with one of our vampires. For, I'm thinking, uh, whenever I see black green, I think my opponent just must have Vraska, and this is the finals. So I typed it like. I wanted it to resolve and then immediately have the text ready. Uh, here I'm playing Hammer Skull because Skullduggery still destroys Nest Robber and makes our Thrash of Raptors tiny again. They all have two toughness on defense so we can even get in there with Nest Robber. So that, I mean it's 10, they could take it all, but they were afraid of the trick earlier so they probably block something, unless they're so desperate. And they figure they'll take a, a little bit of a hit here. They'll take three off our trample, but trade with the the thrash and, and maybe just block all out. So they block like this. I don't want to go down to three life, not really. Then again, uh, this is a great attacker and we will be able to block with our vampire and our skyblade of the legion. So killing three creatures means going to three life isn't so bad. And if they had the trample spell last turn, uh, they might have used it. So we'll just have to see. Uh, since we're doing pretty well here, yeah, we can we can <laughs> play a little play a little close and just take the two damage and get that one lifelink. Well, now we're talking, we have Imperial Aerosaur. But I figure we can't win with that this turn, no matter what we do. Seven, it's close. So what we'll do is get them to a low enough life total that we definitely kill them next turn. And playing Queen's Commission means we get to block all of their creatures. So even if they top deck the pump spell, it has to be something very specific to to kill us. So it's pretty pretty sweet how, how this ends up working out. But they attack with all three. I don't want to lose to any anything, so I just I really consider not blocking the other thing because we'd be at four and go down to two, but end up going for it. So we'll actually end up going back up to four killing nothing, losing all of our blockers, and then having one lethal creature on the table. They don't know about Imperial Aerosaur, which makes both of our creatures lethal. But they use Skullduggery to kill our Adanto Vanguard. And that's not something we can, we can prevent, but we do get Imperial Aerosaur to make this guy bigger and that should be good. So thanks for watching. 3060 with red, white, aggressive.